Hey ladies, do you wish someone would have told you the things you had to learn the hard way about men? Today I'm going to talk about six things women need to know about men. And if you're a man listening to this, you'll probably want to send your wife or girlfriend this episode. So don't go away. We'll be right back. From the magnificent Midwest, it's the Suzanne Venker Show, where men and women are equal in value, but wildly different by nature. Join us here every week when we challenge the culture's hugely flawed narratives about men, women, sex, and love. From coast to coast and from around the world, thank you for joining us. So we're going to be switching gears a bit on the Suzanne Venker Show. I'm still planning on having guests on periodically, but I have so many other things that I want to address. For instance, I get a lot of email and so many of the questions and concerns can be helpful to you. I don't want to just sit on this information when it can benefit you. Same goes for my coaching sessions. There's just so much we cover that can help other couples that it seems a shame not to address them. And finally, I want to talk to you guys a lot in the coming months about my new book, How to Get Hitched and Stay Hitched, a 12-step program for marriage-minded women, which is coming out later this year, but is now available on Amazon for pre-order. If you are single or divorced, or if you have a daughter who's single or divorced, you will want a copy of this book. It is the antidote you need to reject the lies you've been fed by our culture when it comes to women and men. It's about what you really want versus what you've been told you should want. And it's about what is true of men and marriage versus what you've been told is true. This book is the detox any woman born after, say, 1980 for sure, but possibly even earlier, needs as a result of being raised in an anti-male, anti-marriage culture. If you're a woman who wants to not just get married and stay married, but to have a genuinely balanced life rather than a chaotic one, you need this book. It will cover all of the above. We'll talk more about that in the coming months, but for now, definitely head on over to Amazon, type in how to get hitched and stay hitched and pre-order the book. And now on with the show. So I don't know about you guys, but I wish I'd known the things I'm going to tell you when I was first married. If you know how men think and you become fluent in their language, your marriage or relationship is just exponentially stronger. We hear a lot about what men can do to understand women, right? (laughs) There's no shortage of information on that topic, but we very rarely hear what women can do to speak men's language. I don't even know if there's a book on that. So for those who have a strong desire to understand men, I'm going to talk about six things that you need to know that can literally change the entire course of your relationship. Okay, are you ready? We'll start with number one. Men are easy to please and quick to forgive. And I'm I'm thinking of a lot of you women now smiling, especially if you've been married for a while, knowing how true this is, and thinking how very different that is from women who tend to hold on to things forever. So men are opposite of that. You know, and and also women are harder to please. So basically, this is the exact opposite of women. Easy to please, quick to forgive. I mean, men are so simple, it's ridiculous. Not simple as in dumb, as the media would have you believe. Simple as in that they have far fewer needs than we do. What they want most of all is is respect, companionship, and sex. If you supply these basics, your man is going to do anything for you. Slay the dragons, kill the beast, work three jobs, and so on. Men will happily do this if and only if they are loved well in return. And when there's a disagreement, men are quick to forgive if you can swallow your pride and make a loving gesture toward reconciliation. Now, you preferably want to do this naked, but if you don't do it naked, that's okay. He'll still respond. But anytime you can get naked is a win. Number two, a man's identity is inextricably linked to his ability to provide and protect. So... This is a big topic. Um, I've done a whole podcast on it, episodes on it. Um, but it, it, it really cannot be overstated because we have a massive problem going on in this country today where women are not understanding this because they were never told what will happen when you usurp your man's ability to be, to be the provider and to be the hero. 
If you do this by either, there's several ways you can do this. One is making a lot more than he does and then using it as leverage, which by the way, I'm not saying it has to be that way. If you have more or if you make more, I'm not saying your marriage is doomed. It's going to be a much harder hill to climb, however, and you've got to have the skills to know how to cope with that. My last uh, two episodes ago, if you all missed it, I did an interview with one of my clients, Lauren Taylor. And so it, she, she is out earning her husband big time and it, and it's, it's been a long road for them. So I encourage you to go back and listen to that and understand that it's not an impossible relationship, but if you have not been told how your um, success is going to affect, or your ambition, like unbridled ambition, is going to affect your marriage, you're you're going to be caught off guard. You know, you just don't know what you don't know. So people in, in, in this whole um, movement to get women to live their lives like men and go out and slay the dragons and not depend on a man and all of that stuff, they forgot to add, oh yeah, well, by the way, if you really out earn your man, or if you do really, really well, it's going to totally mess up your, your marriage and your love life. They, they, they left that part out. Um, but I see it every day, every day in my coaching practice. So I can vouch for it personally, as can many of my clients. One of the biggest problems that men and women have when it comes to this is because women are not wired to provide and protect their reaction to being the primary breadwinner is very different from a man's. A man's is doing it for the sake of his family. It's, it's how it's, it emboldens him to care for them. And I would add, it emboldens women to know that they can depend on him. And that's another thing that nobody told women, is that they need and want a man on whom they can depend, even if they are earners themselves. And so they're taken off guard when they, when they have an actual reaction, emotional reaction to not being able to depend on a man. If she uses the money that she earns or has by pulling rank, the marriage is dramatically altered. And this is especially true in the bedroom. It almost always comes out in the bedroom. There was an art, there was a quote from a guy named Ralph Gardner Jr. in New York Magazine some years ago who wrote, quote, according to psychologists who see couples struggling with a shift in economic power, many relationships follow the same pattern. First, the wife starts to lose respect for her husband. Then he begins to feel emasculated, and then the sex dwindles to a full stop. I'm telling you guys, I deal with this every week. I get the emails. I know it's I know it's true. I know it's happening. It is it is bad, bad, bad news for a marriage. But again, nobody forewarned in the last 30 years, women, what's gonna happen when they start to become so successful outside the home. Uh, it's, you know, politically incorrect to say, hey, that's going to mess with your marriage. So let's talk about, you know, what's going to actually happen, what that looks like, and how to circumvent that if you get in that boat. So once again, I would encourage you to go back several episodes to, I think it's called A Conversation with a Client. And I talk with Lauren Taylor about um, our work together and what she experienced, or is experiencing rather, uh, being in that boat. Okay, number three. Men can only concentrate on one thing at a time. <laughs> I'm laughing because once again, I'm thinking about all the women who are listening and going, yep. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that we pride ourselves, or at least the culture has us priding ourselves on this idea of that we can multitask and that men can't as though that is somehow superior. And the reality is that isn't true. First of all, there really is no such thing as multitasking. There's a great book called The Myth of Multitasking that I highly recommend. And what he essentially argues in that book and proves when he, when he uh, highlights how the, how the brain really operates is that your brain isn't capable of actual multitasking in the way we mean it. Now, we may be able to, for example, do the dishes and have a conversation simultaneously, right? Or even cook dinner and help your third grader with some basic math homework. But the more complicated the recipe and the more complicated the homework, you know, if it's an older person, older child, the less likely you are to be able to, to handle that. So the brain isn't actually designed to multitask. What it's actually doing 
is switch tasking, where it's moving from one task to another, but doing each one half as well. So that's not the same as multitasking, which is this idea that we can do that we women can do a bunch of things at once and do them all well. That's that's a like a huge lie, totally bogus. And we never look at the fact that men, while they are more linear in their approach to things, and they really can only handle one thing at a time for the most part, we're laughing at that like that's a lesser thing, but in fact it isn't. It is extremely advantageous to be able to concentrate um, so so well on one task and do that well. The fact that 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 men typically don't do more than one thing at a time is not something to make fun of, but something to admire, something we could actually learn from and do better ourselves because we're pretending to do it all and have it all when we're not. We are simply doing everything else. It's like becoming a master of all trades and what is it? What do you say? Jack of all trades and master of none. So again, something we never hear about what a great trait it is in men that they are linear and that they can't multitask um, or that they are, you know, only able to focus on one thing at a time. I think we should stop making fun of that and start emulating that, quite frankly. Okay, number four. We're going through these kind of quickly here. Men need time to process their emotions. Leave them alone while they do. This is something that I, you know, I've been married for several decades and I'm still learning these things today and embarrassed that I didn't know them earlier, but then I don't know. Why would I, why would you, why would anyone? It's just really trial and error. Um, but I, I'm, I get so excited when I find something that works that I just want to scream it from the rooftops. Um, I, I letting men, there are a couple things here. One is letting men, I mean, understanding, I should say, that men do not think the way that you do and cannot process as quickly is really, really important because when they walk away for a spell or when they say, I can't continue this conversation any further, women have the tendency to just keep on with it and keep making them or trying to make them continue the conversation. And they literally are not capable of doing it. And then they get mad or and they're saying, no, 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 I can't. And then you're saying, why not? I need to talk about it now. And it goes back and forth and back and forth. Let them alone. They've got to go off to their cave, get it together and come back at a later time. And you need to let them. I've had various clients for whom I've had to really work with the wives and get them to understand this, that you can't have things done on your timetable. You have to be patient and you have to understand that he's not trying to make life difficult for you. It's just his brain doesn't work that way. He can't take all that in. It's just too much um, noise. And so you will find a very different guy if you give him that space to do what he needs to do. And that can be true even like decompressing from work, right? Or, or if they don't have enough alone time and they want to go off for an hour and do their thing, let them do it. It's, it's going to benefit you hugely if you do, rather than force them into your box and to do things the way that you do it. Number five, this is a really, really, really important one. And I think it's really at the core. Actually, these next two are really huge. But this one is sort of at the core of, in my opinion, everything when it comes to what's going on between women and men. And that is that men don't like to fight with women. They just don't they're not cut out for it. They want to love, support, protect, and provide for women. They do not want to fight with them. And so what has happened, as we know, if you're listening to this program, you know this all too well, for the last 30 years, you've got women who have been groomed to become male competitors in every way, not just in the workforce, but they carry this over into the home. And men aren't cut out for that. It's like war, it's like emotional warfare. And they do that. They, they're, they're cut out for fighting with other men, actually physically fighting with them or, you know, competing with them in the workforce. But when they come home, they're not cut out for fighting with their woman. And so that is why, and I think I really do believe that women, I think they like to fight with men. I do. I think they like to hash it out and they get something from that. Um, but you need to understand that men don't, they just don't. So you're going to have to get that out in some other way, that need that you have, if you have it, um, for, for that kind of angst, I don't know what you'd call it, um, in some other way, because when it comes time to being with your man, it needs to be peaceful and calm and cool and collected and not argumentative and difficult. And the more your relationship 
has that um, component to it, obviously the shakier the marriage and the more conflict ridden it's going to be. And you will be uh, just shocked if you just commit to taking a few days or a week to let's say never argue with your husband for, for one week, just say yes or say nothing. Just, just as a test, as a challenge. I do this with, with clients all the time. It's your challenge and you'll see how miraculous that one task will be, will come back at you tenfold. There's another one that will come at, back at you too, which I feel very strongly about. And that is to be quiet. Not only to not argue, but to just, just talk less and to not move so quickly and to not be in such a rush. This whole, I guess, if anything, I'm trying to get across to you is just being quieter, not, you know, moving more slowly and not arguing. These are huge, huge things that I swear, if you put them into action in one week, less than a week, you're going to see a massive transformation in your marriage because men respond to happy wives, quiet, not, you know, not, not argumentativeness, not a lot of excess talking. None of this means, by the way, that you should be a mouse or that you should walk around like a Stepford wife. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just being more mature in your um, day-to-day interactions with your husband, you know, deciding and thinking about whether or not you really need to say something, trying to slow down is good for you and him. It's good for everybody, your kids. Um, and just, and just not arguing. These are all positive things. And I promise you, if you can cultivate them, it will do wonders for your marriage. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go to number six. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to go through the six again and restate them. Number six is that men don't just want sex. They need sex. So a married man whose wife doesn't like sex or doesn't want to have sex will either seek it elsewhere or he will suffer in silence. And of course the former will destroy your marriage, an affair or more, and the latter is going to destroy him. Let me say that again, because it's really important. A married man whose wife hates sex or doesn't like to have sex will either seek it elsewhere or he will suffer in silence. The former will destroy your marriage and the latter will destroy him. I had an intake form uh, filled out by both a husband and wife last week. and (laughs) It was pretty striking. Uh, They did it sort of separately. It's not typically done this way, but it worked out this way. So, so she reaches out to me and for her free 30 minute call for in preparation for long-term marital coaching. And uh, in the intake form, you describe, you know, what, what's going on in the marriage and what you would like to have happen. And her, 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 um, her description was about half a page long. I mean, it was very lengthy description of what's happening in the marriage, what she's not getting, what she wants to get, so on and so forth. And then he does it a couple of days later. Literally all it said was no sex. <laughs> that was the extent of what he described. And there's so much more in that statement than meets the eye. So even though she went on as a woman, you know, really, really, really descriptive for half a page and he just said one thing, it doesn't mean he didn't say anything. It means that that one statement essentially summed up everything that the wife said in half a page. That's the significance for him. Meanwhile, it, she mentioned sex in her description, but it wasn't the focal point at all. This I think is a great, I mean, I had to, laugh a little bit when I saw it because it was so striking, such a big difference. And I wanted to just use it as, as, as a way of helping people understand the significance of sex for a man, because I think a lot of people think that a lot of wives, a lot of women, um, Oh, he just wants it all the time. And he's just, you know, like you feel used or something, or you, you know, you're not into it. So why should you have to do it or, or whatever the case may be? And I need to do a whole podcast by the way on, on sex. And I, I have it on my list of, of things to do. I promise of what sex, um, what's happening with marriages, especially sexless marriages. I am going to do a podcast on that. Um, but for now, suffice it to say, it's not a matter of just wanting it. It's like a physical need 
that a man has that we women just don't have. And that's a very unpopular thing to say because everybody, well, first of all, the culture wants wants women to think that they're just as sexually charged as men, which is a horseshit. Um, but also, um, you know, the idea that women shouldn't have to have sex if they're not in the mood. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, honestly, wives wouldn't have sex if that were the case, if they just literally only had it when they were in the mood. That's how much their mood, their being in the mood is off from where the their husbands are, which is why you are, as a wife, absolutely sometimes going to have sex when you're not initially in the mood and when you don't feel like it. That doesn't mean you're suffering. It doesn't mean that anything bad's going to come from it, but it might mean you need to do it when you don't want to do it. And of course, you all know, anyone listening knows how terribly politically incorrect that is to say. So, but it's the fact, it's the truth. And we all know that married people know this and there's nothing wrong with talking about it. it. The the hope and the goal is to get men and women, get husbands and wives on the same page about their sex life as far as compromise goes, right? What can a man do to, to get the best out of his wife wanting to be more sexual and what can the wife do for the husband? And that's, that's the ideal scenario. But for the purpose of this podcast, I'm just pointing out the significance of sex for a man and, and acknowledging that it is absolutely 100% different for a woman. And the idea that we shouldn't talk about that is crap. I don't believe that. And especially if we want to be helpful for married couples. So as I say, I will do a podcast on this. I'll probably hear from people after this. I know I will. Cause I keep hearing, I keep getting emails about the significance of um, these of sex in a marriage and, and and hearing from couples who are literally in sexless marriages. And it is, it is, I think an epidemic at this point. So I do need to cover it. Okay, guys. So just to recap the six things women need to know about men. Ready? One men are easy to please and quick to forgive. Number two, a man's identity is inextricably linked to his ability to provide and protect. Number three, Men can only concentrate on one thing at a time. Four, men need time to process their emotions. Number five, men don't like to fight with women. And number six, men don't just want sex. They need sex. So there you have it. I hope that, um, I hope that it's helpful. And again, like I said, if you, um, by the way, for those of you who are listening to this podcast and are regular listeners and don't know that we are now on YouTube, um, you can hear this podcast on YouTube and be able to, and you'll be able to comment there. So if there's something that you want to say, the only place that you'll have a chance to do that is on YouTube. So head on over there if you want to make a comment and I will definitely get it. And of course, you can always reach out to me at Suzanne at the Suzanne Venker show.com. And that ends this hour of the Suzanne Venker show. Don't forget to continue the conversation on Facebook by typing in the Facebook search bar, the Suzanne Venker show. Also, please recommend this podcast to one friend you think would enjoy it. And don't forget to leave us a review on whatever platform you're now using. Finally, if you have a question or comment for me, you can email me at Suzanne at the Suzanne Venker show.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week.